Yeah, and starting off already, Caitlyn, one of the strongest <laughs> meta AD carries. That and Kaisa. I'm expecting to see both of them hitting the bench. Yeah, if they don't um, hit the bench, then Mr. Stumpy's going to pick it and <laughs> FNRL is going to play it because he is proficient at basically every AD carry they've ever put him on. He is a master of disaster in that bottom lane. And yeah, you got to remove it because if you don't, you know, it's just absolutely so impossible to deal with that champion. The rest of the bands should be pretty interesting because once the Morgana is off the table, as it has been, then we start to see, you know, a little bit more diversity, right? You know, you think about the Zac, you think about these champions that affect the map, that pressure it really well into the early mid game as the game starts to shift forward in the focus of these players. Yeah, I really wonder if we're going to see things such as Swain, Trundle going on to the ban list. These are two champions that have kind of been a lot, a little bit more so than I say Kaisa and Caitlyn, but they really can take over a game. Of course, we talked about it. Swain is being banned. Yeah, and when the Swain's banned, I mean, it opens up not just top, but mid lane, right? If you're a mid lane and you're facing that Swain, you're still a little bit scared. You know, you can't really deal with it all that well. So then you call him jungle pressure, and then your jungler doesn't want to walk in the lane with Swain, and then you both die to him. So it's a little bit scary, but that's, you know, not not the only thing you have to worry about. Sometimes you got to worry about that Karma mid as well. It has been making an incredible comeback in the mid lane, and for good reason, right? It's an incredible pushing lane. It enables hyper carries bottom lane because once you remove these 280 carries, then you have to shift towards the hyper carry, right? You have to look at, you know, Tristana. You have to look at Sivir, but they picked up Irelia. That's the one. We That's haven't it. seen too much Irelia. This is 8.8 .8 after all. She yep. did get a little bit of some minor tweaks here and there. They tried to put a little bit more priority onto her in the early game to make her not as weak, but it's still interesting to see because Misty Stumpy loves to play carry top laners. He hates to go on any dog champions. He wants to be the guy carrying from the top lane. So I'm really happy to see this kind of pick. And then over on the flip side, Northern Georgia will lock in the lovers duo. When you don't have to worry about Morgana, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and there aren't very many counters to the Zyra Khan. Once you have that combo, you know, you can generally win pretty much every lane that's not a Caitlyn. And because she's off the table, it makes it a much safer pickup. But that I really in the top lane, I mean, oh, oh. Whoa, they, we are seeing okay. some fun picks from Colombia. The Relia and now Ivern coming in. <laughs> the Ivern, I mean, we haven't seen this champion in competitive play for quite some time for good reason, right? He's been, you know, outclassed, he's been outjungled, he's been outrotated, and he's just not tanky enough in so many scenarios. But I've heard rumors down the grapevine that if you pick Ivern on the right day at the right time, the spirits will come bless you with the power of jungle clear speed, and then you will clear every single camp on the entire map simultaneously. Yeah, yeah that's that's what we call 8.9 when he gets the <laughs> updates. But that's not today, Zeta. He's not very known for his strength, as Vayne is going to be also locked in from Columbia. This is quite the statement coming in from them. And then Spirit Animal going to go on Whoa. to the coveted Wukong. This is actually a champion I believe Spirit Animal does like to play a lot. It's an interesting pick, right? Because you're, when you're picking that into the Irelia, if you go full ham into Irelia, she's going to be able to ult you. She wants to ult. She wants to duel. She's great outplay potential. Wukong, a very one-dimensional champion, he's going to have to be very careful, very precise about when he goes in, because otherwise he's going to get punished by all of that CC and turnaround that she has in her kit. Yeah, but Wukong's pretty strong early game, so I'd imagine that's when you try to go all in. You're trying to go <laughs> and punish Misty Stumpy for choosing someone who does want to get a little bit further into the game. Now, we're getting to the second part of bands, Rise, Cho'Gath. First bands coming in, Rise makes a lot of sense. Julian, he actually hit rank one on the challenger ladder just a couple days ago. This is a player you cannot give something powerful like a Rise. You have to put on onto something a little bit less comfortable. But when you hit rank one as a uh, player, you kind of expect them to be able to play almost anything. Yeah, I mean, I've even heard rumors, in fact, of the Rakan. Uh, Perks has been tweeting that he's only playing mid Rakan currently, and it's being permabanned in high elo EU West challenger scene. Hey, so I started that year months ago, back when Rakan <laughs> first came out. People copying me, I swear. He's copying, he's copying. He cops it from the NA leaderboards, as everyone does. But we're finally going to get the second phase of picks coming out after the scion is removed all those top lane tanks that mr stumpy doesn't want to deal with surprised that they kept banning out tanks given the fact that the wukong has already been selected but yeah. 
It definitely is interesting, but I guess with Galio also on the table, they were maybe worried that it could have gone mid, or maybe that this Wukong was going to go into the jungle, so they want to force the Wukong into the top side of the map, making Misty Zumpy have a matchup that he's more comfortable with, as Galio, very strong, staple mid laner, not having to worry about too many matchups. Yeah, there's only one, and it's still on the table. Uh, the Fiora is up, it's available. <laughs> I guarantee you Julian plays it. There's no way this man does. doesn't play Fiora. I know Fiora. he does, so but... But look at what they just looked in. Lee Sin, they have Wait. Vayne, you have Aurelia, that is a lot of Wait. AD. You don't Lee want Sin to lock in Fiora mid. Wait a minute, no, it's gonna be mid Aurelia. If they lock in Wait. this Camille, it's Where's mid the Lee Sin going? It's, they have it's, Lee Sin and Ivern. No, it's Ivern, Ivern support. Wait. No. Wait. No, 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 It's no. Camille support, hold on, hold on. Lee I, I... Sin top, Irelia mid. Yeah, yeah, it's Aure Aurelia mid, Camille's top. Uh, no, Lee no. Sin? Lee Sin top. No, 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 It's gotta no, no. be Lee Sin top, no, right? It's, it's gotta be Camille. Th Camille. Then Lee Sin support? No, no, no. Lee Sin's jungle. Ivern support. Ivern support. Okay, okay, okay. Ivern support, yeah. yeah Ivern yeah, support. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what it's gotta be. the case, they have played the world's best mind games in drafting okay, this competition. We gotta watch this. Who cares about the Maokai? It's, it's a dog it's, champ. We gotta it's, focus it's on this. Dog champ. We gotta Wait, focus on this. Wukong. They actually did okay, manage to shift the Wukong into the jungle still. So... Well, maybe because now they're not sure where their Relia is going, so they're I mean, like... <laughs> I wouldn't but, want to duel Relia as Wukong, right? Okay, okay. Ivern support. We're, we're both Lee just like... Sin jungle, you're right, you did it. That's it, it's there. Oh my gosh, I... CC Dean, right, Columbia College, has brought some spicy picks to the table. Dean is going to have to turn that fire sauce... Wait, Rakan's mid! Rakan's mid now! <laughs> Oh, they're doing it. <laughs> okay, they're believing. Okay. We have to preface this, guys. This game okay. is one where both teams don't have to worry about too much. Columbia College 2 owed both Illinois and George Mason. They locked in the number one seed. No matter what happens, they will go ahead as the number one seed, even if they somehow lose 0-2 to George Mason. Because they'll win the head-to-head, -head, they'll win the matchups that way. And... Unfortunately for Northern Georgia, the same thing matters for them. They're 0-2. They will be behind, unfortunately. Even if they manage to 2-0 uh, Columbia College, they have lost to George Mason and Illinois. If they tie to them, tiebreaker means that they are eliminated. So, teams might as well have a little bit more fun with this one. And with that, that is actually Camille mid. Mid, mid Camille. So, this... Was actually a thing a couple seasons back, and the only reason I know it is because I used to play this champion mid lane, and it's it's a little bit of that you know self promotion. But besides the point, right? If you can play Camille mid, right? She has two incredibly big power spikes, right? She spikes at uh, Sheen, and she spikes at six. And the thing is, those are the exact same power spikes and timings as Fiora mid lane, right? It still deals <laughs> true damage now. Instead of being on a proc on a vital, it's on her second Q guaranteed. Sure. And she has a longer engage range than the Fiora. So what, 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 Ju what Julian has done is he said, okay, I understand why Fiora works. High mobility, great engage, great early game damage, physical damage. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to get longer engage range, guaranteed Wait. engages for my team later, and go Say for the that. Camille. Say that. The problem with that is there's no <laughs> walls in mid for you to jump off of. <laughs> Hold that thought because there actually are. So, <laughs> there's like corners. There's, Those there's aren't walls. <laughs> it's the four corners, right? The four corners of the globe. So if they're corners, they're corners. <laughs> the world is a globe. There's no corners on a globe. Then why do they call it the four corners of the world? This is the phrase. <laughs> they're wrong. <laughs> whether they're wrong, whether they're right, there are four corners in the mid lane. What you can do is you can actually jump from one corner to the other with your engage, with your E. So. That's actually a ridiculously long range. It does require flash, but it's an instant stun upon arrival. So what you can actually do is you can actually E from a corner, any <laughs> corner, and reach any other corner of that square in mid lane. Zeta, why, why don't I have you with me more often? This is amazing. <laughs> I love this. I love this. So, okay, before we get into the game, before we get to see how the four corners are going to pair up for <laughs> Julian, we do have to give some plugs, some socials. So, guys, make sure to type in exclamation point Discord into the chat if you want to be able to join our Discord and talk everything collegiate, all the way from Dota, Smash, League of Legends. We have all your content there. You can also follow us on Twitter at CSTAR League to get all things collegiate. But if you just want League of Legends, go to CSL LOL in order to keep up to date with all the League of Legends collegiate scene. You can also follow us on Facebook at C Star League. 
then as always nothing but gratitude for the largest streaming platform in gaming to support collegiate sport esports from PAX East and West and many more events, the CSL wouldn't be what it is today without the help and support from them. Be on the lookout for cool opportunities to get involved from Twitch in the near future, and be sure to show them some support on Twitter at Twitch or on Facebook at Twitch as well. If you can't watch these games live, you can always re-watch the shows on our VODs. We have them on YouTube. C-Star League is going to be the YouTube channel you can check out. And then lastly, we got to give our lovely advertisement over to Juice Battery. Ever find yourself playing a game of Fortnite on console and it looks like it's about to be Victory Royale? You spot the last one and you have them in your sights. You press to shoot and nothing. No, it's not the light. It's dead battery because you have have some generic brand of battery. If you were using Juice Battery, you would have long-lasting rechargeable batteries that are six times longer than the other brands you see out there. Stay charged so you can stay in the game longer. Head over to JuiceBattery.com to learn more. And with that, guys, we got all the socials out of the way. Let's get ready for some exciting League of Legends. Columbia College taking on Northern Georgia University in what is damn well going to be quite the match when you have <laughs> Ivern support, you have the real mid, who doesn't love some craziness? And the interesting thing is, as weird as the Ivern support is, it still clears camps, just not instantly, right? He can just walk up to a camp and actually just proc his passive, stand there, come back to it later, and take it, you know? He doesn't actually have to kill things. He doesn't actually have to stay in lane. He can go counter jungle <laughs> alongside Zeta. that. But... Zeta, look at this. Both this, teams, oh. same side of the map. We might see some spooky. <laughs> but oh, both, they missed they're... each other. <laughs> no, they're gonna hit they're gonna hit on the rebound. Yeah, they, they are. They have okay. to hit on the rebound. Okay, okay, so who do you expect to die first? We gotta place our bets. Who's gonna die first? First, death? first death oh, is Wukong. gonna be uh, I'm betting Wukong. Wukong. Look at it, look at him, look at him. Oh, oh no. Oh, yeah. oh, oh no, no. Galio, oh, not gone. this way. Don't path back this way, man. Budget oh, box. He's, he's gonna see him. Don't value your life more, man. Oh, he's gotta run. That's gonna get rooted up by the grass going followed up by Sonic Wave for first blood. Uh, looks like we were both wrong on the bets, but it's still the first blood going over to Columbia. But I, I can't believe, you know, you don't expect it. You don't expect them to still be there at a minute 20 into the game, but they were, right? Columbia College, great invade, and they just... They find Budget Box on the way out. It's a free kill hand delivered to them. That was very unfortunate for uh, Budget Box. He's <laughs> given over first blood, and not just to anyone. It's over to Zach on Lee Sin. And I'd be impressed to see if it's going to be a tank Lee Sin. I'm expecting full damage. I'm thinking lethality. I'm thinking full damage. Warriors the entire nine yards. It's <laughs> If he doesn't, you know, it would break my heart, but... That heart's been broken before. Zach, though, he's going Ooh, for that mid lane got T2. The brute already, and look at the ignite damage with <laughs> another kill on to Zach. This is brutal. Two minutes into the game, this Lee Sin is going to be a menace. <laughs> he's already killed him twice, man. He's dead. Stop it. No, this is not the way. But either way, Zach just takes red buff. He walks mid. He knows Galio doesn't have flash available, so it's just a guaranteed kill. And look at this a budget box teleported into this lane. The lane is getting pushed up because it's Misty Stumpy now in mid. So maybe some craziness, but look at bot lane. You're a, you've got to be careful. One more auto could do it, but the heal was enough. Ignite already used by Dean, so not going to be able to pick up the kill onto Rakan. He's safe under his tower. The aggression coming in from Columbia. They might have had a little bit more of a fun draft, but they are making sure this game is anything but. Yeah, I think that this is going to be an incredibly aggressive game from Columbia, right? They have the Lee Sin, they have the kills on him already, and so they can just play with abandon in these lanes, reckless as they need to be, in order to shove them in, in order to get the kills, but a root lands, not going to get translated into much else, though. Yeah, but the thing I have my eyes on is, look at Misty Stuff, he's pretty low, Invade was coming in from Zach, but the lane was starting to push back from a budget box. So it could be risky for Zach going in this deep, even though there is going to be a little bit of fighting going back and forth. Look Grunch. at the electric cube damage. Solo kill by Zach. He's on a killing spree. He's getting a kill a minute at this rate. And if that continues, he's going to have 20 kills at 20 minutes. But I don't think the game is even going to last that long. Besides the point, he has a couple regrets trying to fight a 2-0 Lee Sin as Wukong while the buff is still hitting him. The chicken putting in a little bit of extra work. Make sure that he goes home with the payday. But Mr. Stumpy is baiting in this mid lane. Budget Box, yeah, be careful. See if they can get the taunt and get the stun. Budget Box is getting a little bit tankier at this point. Whoa. He might be able to get the return kill. He didn't opt to go for the last auto attack. Whoa. 
But budget and you box. think that Whew. that should just be a free kill, right? He just needs to go in. Harimono though. All right, only needs one more auto from Evan, but he was under the tower. That's the name of the game right now for Northern <laughs> Georgia. Is trying to stay as close to your tower while also getting the experience from these minions. Because Evan, Dean, Julian, Zach, even Mr. Misty Stumpy, they're all looking to see if they can get these kills. <laughs> And with the Camille roam in back to the mid lane, Julian's here. Julian's here. They got the stun from Misty Stumpy, knocking back with the Justice Punch. So easy kill, but the flash coming in from Regrets, trying to see if they can delay the damage. But finally, a kill goes over to Georgia. But look who's here. He wants to go on a rampage. <laughs> Sonic Wave waiting just in time. He is unstoppable. 4 and 0 at 443. If you want to talk about a fed, Lee Sin, this is the guy to be scared of. Zach says, hey, I've got a kill. Hey, I've got another kill. And then Regrets decides, I'm going to make it a fourth. Invades in the jungle. He does get the kill after killing Misty Stumpy. But all he has to do is walk out. And unfortunately for him, cannot make his way out. Might be the same for Spirit Animal. Yeah, Spirit Animal, Sonic Wave connects. Zack follows it up, gets the flash out of Maokai, hookshot to knock back damage in for real <laughs> unstoppable, finally there for Zack. Now he is 5-0-0, five minutes into the game. His gold alone is double his opponent jungler. I, I don't know <laughs> what to say at this point. I mean... It just seems like everything he's doing is working, right? They're perfectly coordinated. Every single dive is the CC. It's ready, it's there, and it's following up perfectly, right? When you have Julian and they go in for the fight, you think, okay, you know, he does have a hook shot. It's coming up soon, but they hold the hook shot longer, right? He's just waiting for that flash to come out, and then he uses it. But Evan RL is in a little bit of trouble. Had to flash and heal. Knight was on him, but look at the roam coming in into the bot lane from Misty Stumpy. Gets the disarm mechanic from the alt. The Vanguard was trying to see if it could slow him down, but Regret did flash. Gets out of there, away from everybody. And Zach, even in the mid lane, still trying to punish poor budget. <laughs> and the thing is, right, because Julian and Misty Stumpy have been out of lane for so long, Budget Box actually isn't down very many levels, right? He's still got XP, he's still in this game, but all of the kills are going over to Zach, right? Zach is almost equivalent level to your mid laner or your top laner <laughs> at six minutes. That's something to worry about, right? He's getting even stronger by the second, and it looks like he's going to finish off his Warriors as soon as he decides to stop camping mid. <laughs> okay. If there's ever a stop in this action coming in from Zach, I do want to know, do you think that there is a way Georgia can win this game? They have a pretty nice composition. A lot of tanks, a lot of frontline, even a lot of engage. Uh, the win condition is the same as it's always been. You know, you survive until 35 minutes. If you get to 35 minutes, this composition, it doesn't matter how well Columbia played up until that point, the composition should play itself, right? The Zaya just throws in root after Rakan ults, and then you have the Galio ult coming down on top of it all with Wukong combo and the Maokai making your team even tankier with more CC. It's just, it's super hard to imagine a way in which this composition doesn't win past 35 minutes, but getting there is the issue, right? They have to slow down the game. They have to slow down the Zac. And at this point, you know, that's a little bit of a big ask. And I'm also worried that even if they get to that 35 minute with Evan RL on to Vayne, she loves waiting for the game to drag on that long as well. Pretty much there's always a way for Columbia to win. Early yeah. game, Lee Sin, late game, Vayne. The thing is, it is just a Vayne, right? It is a win condition guaranteed, but you have to protect the Vayne. And Evan RL, he's incredibly mechanically adept. He can absolutely oh, play well no. enough. Mr. Stumpy, though, is going to try look and start it. Look at the damage coming in. They just get no the six. reset, jumping back, ultimatum. It is going to be interrupted by a budget box. Zach here, flash coming in, knocks it back with the Justice Punch. Will not follow it up. Sonic Wave is going to be followed up, though. Kicks back. Dragon Rage wasn't able to get the kill. But you can tell Columbia are not relenting. They want to see if they can pick up some kills, but they got to be careful. The Winds of War will discourage them. Going to back off for now, but they will be happy. They got to get another kill. This time, it's under a tower. So the interesting thing is, if that Wukong had Cyclone, right? If he was able to throw that ultimate out, oh, pull that thought, budget box. Gets the taunt on the one, but this is going to be the Vanguard coming in to slow down. But look who's here. It's going to be the rotation coming in from oh. Rakan. He picks up a double kill. He even gets a shutdown for his troubles. A little bit over ambitious from Columbia, but either way, they do come out with a kill. 
And I, I can't believe the Rakan's the one that finally picked it up, right? You think Regrets is going to get back up there in time. You think maybe it's the Maokai. But no, Regrets, uh, Hirai Momo just comes back up to the top lane. He gets a great roam off, knocks them up, and picks up two kills. I mean, even if it's onto the Rakan, at least it's onto somebody. You know, at least they're getting gold. At least they're getting shutdowns. Yeah, but look at this. Dean oh. and Hirai fighting it out. Flashing oh. forward. Going on a killing spree with this Rakan. You wanted to see the mid Rakan. Well, there it is for He's you. mid. He's Rakan. It works out. <laughs> and he has three kills now. He is going to be the carry. I, at this point, he's going to need to be, right? They need somebody that can stall the game out. They need somebody that's tanky enough to not just instantly die to the Lee Sin. And maybe the Rakan is the answer, but he's going for a Magi Soul Stealer. First item, first back. He's, he's rethought that. He's rethought that he's actually... Oh, come on. Go... Nah! Come on, go Wait with the Magi! Let's go! <laughs> oh, good CC stop onto Julian. Has to force the flash out. Force the flash, but here's Zach. Here's Misty. They're going to be able to stop Spirit Animal. He wanted the kill so bad. The duet to stun and kill for Misty Stumpy. And this has been the key. This top side of the map has been just a dance of Zach, Julian, and Misty Stumpy swapping lanes, going and roaming together, forcing kills, forcing ganks. And it's a big reason that Columbia College have as much of a lead as they do. But keep in mind, Georgia still only down 2,000 gold. It is winnable at this point, right? The game hasn't run away from them, but they need to make some effort to slow this down, right? Wart up, make sure that you can see them coming, because if you can't, they're going to keep doing these roams, these three-man dives. It's very true, and it's something that will be a little bit worrying for Northern Georgia if they're not able to keep up with the rotation. So you got to make sure that they keep control of the vision game, because you can tell Columbia have been slowly but surely pushing that advantage into the jungle of regrets, making so that we barely see of uh, the Wukong at all. It's been Rakan going for these roams. It's been... Everyone else, essentially, besides this Wukong, he's always been invaded and attacked in his own jungle whenever he's involved in a fight. Yeah, and I think that speaks to the fact that, as you were talking about, they haven't been able to keep up with the macro, right? They need to be a little bit faster, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more willing to take these kinds of fights. And unfortunately for Spirit Animal, he's not able to deal too much damage to Julian. The same can be said the other way around, but here comes another engagement in the bottom lane. Bot lane, here's a heroic entrance. Vanguard got the disarm, but it doesn't really help out too much. 4v4 fight. Misty Tumpy had to flush. Knock up auto regret, but he goes right back in, whirling around, but it gets nobody. Oh, fight for a beautiful kick coming in from Zach. Quickness not gonna help you out for long as the shutdown gets returned by Zach, even though they will find it when it's ripped apart by Quick Crit. But he's running away. He lost too many of his own team and had to back out. Three for one. Columbia College turn on the gas and they accelerate into another quick set of kills. Every time they do this, every time they engage, the key is that Georgia have to be backing out. They have to be able to peel and they just can't peel this much damage, this much engagement coming out of CC. You're quite right, Misty Stumpy on the aggression in the mid lane. You wanted to see if you can pick up quick crit. Got him very low. Julian Spirit Animal on the top side of the map. We're dueling it out as well. You know something? We do, we do gotta talk about it. I was worrying about Columbia. They didn't really have very much AP damage. Well, Misty Stumpy has gone for the full AP build. We already saw the door entering. I was really curious if it was just for the start. But with the proto belt under his belt and having himself almost 2,000 gold, he can easily back, and he's going to be doing a lot more damage. It's going to be the Sork boost that come out. Have an RL. He's got the dodges. He's got the moves. He's got the blue suede shoes, but he doesn't have the damage Not to yet. finish off the Rakan. And interestingly enough, if Zach goes in on this, I'm thinking that they can get the catch of Julian. They might be able to taunt on to Zach. Julian just going to wave clear. Using that TM out to make sure they, they can start pushing up the wave. They do want to look for this dive on a budget box. They even go forward. Gonna have to use the Dragon's Rage Shield from Dean to keep Zack alive. A little bit ambitious. But does kind of help them push this wave just a little bit more so they can get the vision into the jungle. And the farm has still been reasonably good, actually, from uh, North Georgia. They've looked, you know, relatively clean after the first couple of minutes. You know, they slowed down. They haven't died as much. And you know, it's actually helping them out a lot. I think it's a lot attributed to that vision as you were talking about. You know, they've gotten a couple wards. They've slowed it and warded up so that they can slow it down. Right now, 
with the Maokai, you know, he knows they're coming up, he can back in time. That's what we'd love to see. That's how they're going to be able to try and get some kind of a win condition in this game. But to do so, you're still going to have to deal with Zach. Exactly. And also looking back towards the build, let's put that on hold just for a little bit. Misty Stumpy was fighting with Fudgebox in top lane. Oh, Julian regrets on attack. Julian. Jonah probably fall, even though he's under tower, he's got to get out of there if he can, barely. The tower shooting once more isn't going to actually flash. hit the flash forward from Regrets at top side. Zach finds out Hirai and takes him down bot lane. Evan RL getting the crits with crit, but won't be able to solidify any kills, just a little bit of damage. And the root does land. The root does land, and look at this, going in with the Vanguard's edge. To try to slow down Budget Fox, he wanted to help out his team, but now he's got nowhere he can run. Just needs one more auto. Dean actually getting his first kill of the game. Very, very interesting though. Evan RL has been left alone for so long in this bottom lane that he has gotten himself a quite sizable CS lead. And quick crit, you know, he wants to farm obviously, but as you were talking about, the vein is still a ticking time bomb. As much as you want to accelerate the game, as much as you, you know, want to win it early, you always have that win condition later too, so they don't even have to worry about that. Spirit Animal has to worry about something though as the CC starts to come in. So has a tower pretty tanky at this point into the game. The Iron Vest is going to help him out just a little bit. Knocked up by Daisy. Daisy taking up the tower for days. I don't think you want to follow this one up, Zach. Gotta be careful because it can't be turned around unless Julian shows up. Flash coming in. Heroic entrance. Will dissuade Columbia from going a little bit further, even though Hirai finds out Zach getting kicked back by the kick. Julian taunted up forward. by Galio. Nowhere to run for Camille. Ultimatum is about to come up, but he's gonna run away with a hook shot. Ignite, not there to fin finalize the kill today. Wins Ooh. award just out of range and barely surviving is Julian. Regrets is in the mid lane, but they are pushing into the top side. North Georgia have made a move, and they look to take their first turret of the game. Zach is about to get chain CC'd, though, and oh, he looks to go no down. They're diving as well. They're gonna go for this, and this actually might be a great play. They do lose Spirit Animal, but look how low Dean and Julian are. They cannot fight with Budget. Winds of War solidifying yet another kill on Oh, hold Dean. that thought, though. Misty Stumpy's trying to make this a two versus two. Yeah, and he's got the AP build. He's going to do a lot of damage. He just blows up the health bar of Harai. Ultimatum laid down by Julian. Even the proto belt to get a little bit more poke. Budget, he's itemized for AP, AD damage, not for AP. So he's getting chunked out by Aurelia. Regress is on the back side, but jumping under the tower. Missy Stumpy, Has Julian, cyclone. they have so much Cyclone. Doesn't finish any damage on to Julian. Julian with the sweep. Doesn't connect it just yet. Has to be careful. TP behind. Missy Stumpy with the stun goes forward on to regrets this battle going back and forth. Misty Stumpy finds the kill. Can oh he outrun the sapling? He's living on a sliver he of stun. The boss duet will stun up a spirit animal for now. Running away. Blast cone back to his team. Somehow Misty Stumpy makes it out alive. I have absolutely no idea how that panned out as it did, but Columbia College. They end up in the most chaotic fight that they possibly could have. You think North Georgia has it. You think they've gotten an advantage. And then they just keep getting pick after pick. And these, this game, what is going on, Zeta? How many kills do we have? We have 28 kills at 17 and a half minutes. The first and tower the squad's has just top. gone down. And Spirit Animal, you're right. With the squad here, there's nowhere he can run. They're looking for the kick to make sure he has nowhere to escape. Twisted advance. Oh. Will make it so that he's a little bit dislocated from the dragon's range. But when the sonic wave hits, he's got no thing he can do. And speaking of nothing he can do, I mean, you know, you'd think he's actually getting a decent chunk on a Julian, but the turret, it has no HP. If it had a bit more HP, maybe the play would have worked out. But unfortunately for him, at this point, you gotta say, you can't send one versus three into the top side because they're just gonna dive you under turret. Exactly. Look, that's a tier two. They were trying to uh, dive on to a budget box already. He's got thorn mail on it does on Galio. That's not the kind of build you want to go for, regardless of how the game's going. So it tells you right there the story of how it is going. As Julian has to lay down the ultimatum a little bit too far out.
Oh, Evan RL, he's got himself the Rage Blade going for that late game scale, but that means he cannot deal with Quick Crit if he doesn't play this incredibly oh, well. Look at the Feather Storm, it was the wrong way, the crit's coming oh. in! They're gonna have a nice trade back and forth. Blade Caller was just in time, even though it was from the grave. Still a great trade. And that's just the power of Zaya. You think you have an escape, you've gotten a great dance around her. Misty Stumpy, speaking of Misty dancing, Stumpy. he needs something. Nowhere to run him. Got the stun, but this time he cannot have the fancy feet. And that means that George has actually got themselves their first turret of the game, most likely, with three members in the mid lane pressuring this down and a pick on the Misty Stumpy plus Evan RL. The most that they can summon is a three man defense in so the it. middle lane. And that means that they would need to contend with four members. Of Georgia, you know, the Wukong still lurking in the side. We'll see what the kick does. Gonna have the kick with Budget Fox being the reciprocant, taking a little bit of damage, but they do find it back onto Zach. A little far out for V2, taking the tower. Spirit Animal was trying to see if he can help out Wukong. Wukong is fighting with Daisy, and have barely get knocked up. Spirit Animal back underneath the tower. Keep in mind, this is a 2v4 for the longest time because they already lost Zach, and then finally, Evan RL shows up. He hasn't been a part of most of these fights. But the TP is going to discourage Columbia from going any further. They cannot fight this for 5v3. Or maybe they can. They think they have the damage. But finally they lose Misty Stubby. Julian will trade it back. Even though Evan RL find quick crit. Julian hit up with the Justice Punch. Evan RL, can you dodge away for days? Can you be the hero that your team oh. needs for now? No. Because the devil kill for Budget Box will finally find him. As he gets him with the Winds of War. North Georgia continuing the push. And this is the power of the composition, right? As soon as you try to take a 5 versus 5, you have yourselves a Galio on top of a Maokai, on top of everything that Zaya does, plus Rakan CC. There's just so few ways to try and play against this composition, right? It almost plays itself in the effectiveness, but they go in a little bit too deep. Cyclone onto Zack. Unstoppable is Regrets. Baited in by the low health bars. Zach, he was sitting at, what was it, 8, 2, and 4 for a bit? Now, 9, 5, and 5. Maybe he's got to temper back a little bit. Be a little bit more cautious with how deep he goes in. Yeah, and the other thing is, they are still on a timer, right? The thing that I wasn't worried about when I talked about them being an early game-centric team for Columbia isn't the Irelia, it isn't the Camille, it isn't the Vayne. All of these things scale reasonably well. It's the, you know, it's the full AD Lee Sin. <laughs> right? When you have yeah. lethality, when you're full AD, you are on a timer. If you're not able to make those plays, if they don't start working out, then you start losing. And there's so much armor on these carries, specifically the Galio he was trying to kill, that there's almost no way he can pick him off without, you know, a last whisper at this point. And that seems like a very, very interesting build path, to say the least. Julian, gonna find Spirit Animal on the top side of the map. It's unfortunate for you, Zayda. I keep wanting to talk about how we think the game's <laughs> gonna go, but these teams are saying, no, no, no. We want to fight, fight, fight. We want to play this as a greedy and bloody as humanly possible. So, <laughs> it's just Which, interesting to watch. There's, Wukong's coming up top. They're not gonna stop the fight. They're gonna go in fully. On now, how long has this fight been going on for the past, I, I'd like to say 30 seconds, but regrets. He's gone for lethality as well. Duskblade, Electrocute, burns right through Julian. Making it so that he's little more than a side worry. And a side worry, I think, is what Misty Stumpy is in the bottom lane. Because if Zach comes in from behind... Oh, with Featherstorm as well. Low power damage. That tower is going to fall down pretty quickly as it was already taken down in mid lane. Look how close that is. This tower might fall... Did some... Sorry, I thought that we saw something happen on the top side of the map. It was just the trade of the towers. But... The Rift Herald is still mid. Rakan's gonna have to try and stop with three members in the bot side. Forward oh, for the TP. He might be a little bit too late. I'm surprised that Columbia didn't want to take down the tower before it completed. Budget Fox goes pretty far forward. Sonic Wave did connect. Vanguard's edge to discourage any further aggression, Ooh. but they found out on it to regret. Still, Blade Caller oh. gonna rip apart people. Zach far into the back line. He's pretty squishy. He only got quick crit. A nice hit into the wall. Will pick up the double kill behind Julian. He teleported, finishing off. Budget box, nowhere to run, tower down, Columbia College, hot pursuit of the last surviving member of Harai. She gets hit back by hook shot. Has to flash over the wall towards his tower, but that APP might not be is out for Harai though, Julian. He still wants this Rakan and he's gonna go for it. Oh, quick mix 
will try to discourage, but that is going to be the ace finally coming in from Julian. You're not wrong. He wanted the kill so bad. They'll even get a tower for their worries. And that was, I, I have to say, such a chaotic fight that it played into the favor of Columbia College. As soon as they spread out, as soon as the tank separated from the back line, they pounced in on the Wukong because he had no support, he had no Galio, and that means that he has no resistances. So he dropped absolutely instantly, and then somehow Zach found purchase on the quick crit, trades his, uh, not even his life, but his damage for that of the damage of the Zaya, and that's a fantastic trade to make at this point, right? When you get their AD carry off of that composition, so little damage is left in it that it means Columbia College can just run through them and then run through the turrets. So Zeta, do you prefer Spooky ghosts or going fast? I prefer bush janks. <laughs> Is that what you prefer? Because uh, I want to see how it's going to pay off later. Julian still running away, but he's no Misty Stumpy. He can't dodge away for days, but the team will make the call to go right onto the Baron when they notice that the jungler is there. King's coming and in from North Georgia, but it will be a little bit too late. A very, very good call, though. Columbia College, as soon as they see the jungler, they were already in the vicinity of Baron if this was a possibility, and then they executed on it. And to get Baron, even if you lose a T2 mid, I think it's such a worthwhile purchase because they've been playing this split push game, they've been sending the vein to the side lanes, and they have so many effective side lane split pushers that even just taking it away from a composition that wants Baron, wants to be able to finish this game off, is oh, a great thing to have. Georgia, they're going right down mid. They want to see if they can open up the base of Columbia. They take down the inhibitor, going forward onto Misty Stumpy. No taunt yes, yet. It's only Zach who finds the taunt. Daisy knocking up a few minions, but here comes the Vanguard Edge dumping into the back. Heroic entrance knocking up Zach as they make quick work of him for quick crit. A lot of damage back and forth. Finally, four members of Columbia are in the area. No stun coming in. Jumping forward. Julian wanted to see if he could pick off people, but they're very low. He can easily go forward. Misty Stumpy as well. They see blood in their eyes. They smell it like the sharks that they are because they want to finish off Budget Box. Going a little bit more. Julian steal the press. Ultimatum into the back line. They lost Evan RL. Can they get a little bit more? Misty Stumpy doing great as he is on this AP Aurelia shutdown, even for Julian. I just realized that was AP Aurelia. I was so confused. I was like, you know, how in the world is Misty Stumpy not doing more damage? And the answer is, he is. It's just coming in much, much larger, shorter bursts. But besides the point, Columbia College with their second fight win in a row finally have some purchase on this game. They can turn and try to go for their own inhibitor tower, which might even pan out into an inhibitor if they can get the Zaya. They have Baron too, and look at quick crit. He's made it quickly dead in that fight. Going up even for the tower. Finally, inhibitor jumps down as they get the hook shot. Bouncing around Spirit Animal. He's still alive. Sat Magic was doing a pretty nice job of keeping him alive. They will trade. Misty Stumpy will open up the base slightly of Northern Georgia. Will the Sonic Wave be connected? It will be followed up. Here I, quickness. Is it going to help you keep yourself oh. alive? Not hitting onto the tactical sweep, but it will finally be traded back. Zach in the back line. Now 2v1. Can he get further will hit with a taunt and he is dead and that was exactly what happened on the side of north georgia as soon as they get the inhibitor tower they stay too long they get engaged on they get killed and columbia college they really really can't afford these mistakes at this point you know it's 27 minutes your timer it is ticking down the hourglass is about to run out of sand and you need to find that before quick crit goes down wait a minute evan look at the damage barely he holds on to his life and this time around with infinity edge ginsu's even the rapid fire cannon he has a little bit more damage than quick crit just a bit though that wasn't a huge win. It wasn't, you know, oh, I feel very safe about this. I got, you know, such an easy kill. No, it wasn't. It wasn't even, like, close to feeling comfortable. It was not even close, baby, comfortable. But that's besides the point, you know. What has happened is Evan RL, he has gone for a tank-killing build, and it means that he's lost out a lot on those single-target stats. You know, he doesn't have the ability to kill squishies as fast as he otherwise would. So right now, he needs to get into fights rather than being in the side lanes that we've seen him time and time again. Very true. Avanarl with the zeal, most likely going to go with the last crit item. 
Ooh. Will he be able to get in time is my question. <laughs> There's a lot of aggression back and forth. Zach caught out once again, knocked up by Cyclone. But here I trying to see if he can dodge away for a little bit of time. Killing spree coming in from Wukong. A little bit of damage onto Evan RL. He has to flash away, but here comes the moving speed. They're slowing down Vayne. She has nowhere she can truly run. Dean even spotted out, but he might trade it back. Ignite shutdown for Dean on to regrets. And still, still getting chased though. Look at the side lanes. That's the bigger thing. If yeah. you keep chasing this Ivern, you're going to be losing your base with both Aurelia and Camille on the push. But the same can be said for Columbia. If they don't actually send anybody back, they will be losing their inhibitor as well. And one inhibitor for two is still a good trade, but that depends if Julian can get the kill on this top side. He needs to kill off Quick Crit or he will not even get the turret. And Neither will uh, Misty Stumpy. If he is stuck in the bottom lane, if he has to contend with a tank, he can't kill anybody off either. But now they can pinch back into the mid lane. The crab has completed itself, oh, and they've they, returned to their nest. They made sure they're going to lock up Budget Box. A lot has been expended on him. He's pretty tanky at this point. Look at his build. Zonia's then Thornmail and Righteous Glory. He's hard to kill, hard to execute. They have an easier time of making work of Julian. But can they finish him off? It's a bigger thing. Still a lot of back and forth. Zonius has been popped. They will find budget boxes. They go for a little bit more into the back line. Here comes the quickness. It hits up onto four members, taunting them up for quite some time. With the ult of Maokai, they find Zach. They find Aurelia. They want Evan RL now. He's blood for them. But if they can get him, that's the bigger question. He keeps running away. Regrets has so much damage. Ignite coming on so they can spot him out. And the lethality from Wukong will slap him dead. NGE, every time you count them out, every time you think there's no way they have a way back into this game, they prove us wrong and they win yet another fight with that incredible turnaround. Julian, what can he do? He can go for this inhibitor, but he just can't kill the Maokai. As tanky as he is, as much damage as he has, this Maokai is just bigger. And if he was at full health, it would be a bit of a different story. He's still trying his hardest. Wukong, he's going to get here before he even thinks about killing the Maokai, though. Ultimatum comes down, even using the ult. He's slammed down by Galio. And unfortunately, losing your split pusher who was trying to go mid and you already lost your inhibitor. This is massive stuff coming in from the boys from Beach Belt. And the the boys from the south are coming up. You know, if they're able to do this, right, they're reaching their power spikes. They're reaching... That 37, 35 minute mark that we talked about, you know, when we said the way that they win this is they slow down the game. They've already slowed it down. It's already almost to the point where they have complete control over every single fight that they've taken. And it will require at this point almost a misstep on their part in order to allow Columbia College to win a single fight, right? They need to mess up in order for Columbia to get back into this. But I still want to see a full 5v5. You know, we yes. haven't seen that this whole game. We're 31 minutes into the game. We've seen a lot of split pushes, 4v5s, 2v5s, but never a straight 5v5. Columbia have always been split pushing. So I really am curious, since they still have a 4,500 gold lead, if they can win a fight at this point. Yeah, and I think it doesn't even matter what the gold lead is at this point. The next person who wins a fight convincingly, you know, three people up, two people up at least, they can take a minimum of inhibitors and most likely a single Nexus turret at minimum, right? So with that in mind, and Misty Stumpy in lane, Julian not, they have to be worried about this Baron. They don't have the vision. They're trying to face check it. King on that Baron down to 25%. I don't think they're going to be able to steal it today. This might coming down. Budget Box finds two. Taunt on to Zach, taking him, shredding him. Part with the winds of war and Misty Stumpy a little bit too far for where Vanguard coming in, but he blows up quick crit, makes quick work of him. Losing Vayne, it's gonna be the assassination from Wukong. Split push is going to be the answer from Columbia. The base race Super could minions. be the optimal position if they want to. Back channeled, Hirai is gonna be the only person who's gonna be able to show up. Wukong still in the base, Zach found out by Maokai. And it's still the push. Here comes the TPN. You gotta do something quick, Harai. You gotta stop this cancel because it could be a trade back in this game, even with the Guardian's Angel on Wukong. The base will stay alive for Columbia. Oof. And they better be counting their lucky stars that not everybody went directly into the base, right? If they hadn't killed off Saya, if Zach hadn't made that, sorry, if Misty Stumpy hadn't made that pick, we would be in a completely different situation right now. But 
fortunately for him, fortunately for his team, he did kill the one member of the entire side of Georgia that can actually push well. And if the Zai is dead, if they don't have that ability, if the Wukong, you know, doesn't have support, they can't actually shove into turrets. And so right now, it's just a fight, a duel to try and see which AD carry goes down first. And if they don't go down, how many how many members are up of the other team? Because if there's only two members up, doesn't matter which team it is, and the enemy AD carry is alive, your base is as good as gone. Something that's really interesting in these fights as well is FNRL has no peel. Dean keeps going in with the team. Same with Zach. They want to go and pick off quick crit. But that makes it so much easier for Regrets to go onto the back line, assassinate Vayne. You can even see him spotting out looking for the flank right there. This could be it right now. They need some kind of a fight and they just haven't found it yet. Right? They need... You were talking about the 5 versus 5. They don't need just a 5 versus 5. They need a 5 versus 5 that they win. And that's such a big ask into this team because of the Galio, because of the Maokai, because of the Rakan. We talked about all of these champions. They all play a massive part in keeping this team at the top of the CC food chain. Without Maokai, though, maybe things could change. Remember, TP advantage still in the favor of Spirit Animal. Now Julian taking the tower a little bit too much. Spirit Animal doing a good job of trying to clear out these waves with Camille here, but here comes Regret. We're looking for the assassination with the Cyclone. Ultimatum laid down, but it will not help him out. With him dead, the Elder spawning in two minutes. This could be a play for Vision if you want to. That's why Columbia have to keep up with this pressure. They find out Budget Box. They could turn it around. Teleport in from Maokai in the back line. Here comes Mr. Stubby. Not able to find Quick Crit just yet. One more auto is all it needs. And Quick Crit will barely live to see another day. Blue Flash. He blew ultimate. He blew heal. But he's alive. And that's what matters. He can come back in. He can heal up. And now he can help his team take the base. Columbia College. Three members left. And they have to defend against all five members of Georgia running with Baron minions into their base. This is where it's all coming to online for Georgia. You talked about 35 minutes, Zeta. Well, we're here. They're knocking at death's door for Columbia. They want to take game one against the team that is looking to take number one seed for group B. Here goes the second inhibitor down. And you might be wondering, you know, what would have happened with a slightly different draft? What would have happened, you know, with a Zach, with a possible, you know, support like the Rakan maybe even taken away, maybe even a Braum, something that gives you tankiness, and then you realize the entire composition, all of these split pushers, they just can't be put into effect, right? Because the one thing a split pusher does incredibly well is they take the 1v1 and they win it. So what you have to do then is send more than one person into this one versus one, make it a two versus one, then the map's unbalanced, then you get pressure. But neither one of these people, nor the Irelia, nor the the Camille, can deal with the Maokai, right? If Spirit Animal goes back, he is not going to die. I think that's the entire problem right now Columbia College is facing. They don't have anyone who can kill him and keep their team alive in the 4 versus 4. Julian still on the split push mission, so you gotta be careful. Top side, lots of minions already built up by Northern Georgia. The Elder Drake now spawning. This could be the ten potential for the one and only 5v5 fight that we've seen all game. All right, was able to take away the Blast Cone, but you can tell that Columbia do not want to let this go without a fight. Julian, you know, he's close, but he's not in this fight. He needs to make his way around. Now spotted out by a ward, and they have taken this dragon to about half. Fight should be coming in soon. Uh, but be careful, look at FNRL, he's already backed off, he's not going to be a part of the fight, he wants to see if he can keep up the minion wave. Dunn comes in. Baron, uh, Dragon, has been reset slightly, still at 50%, it's hovering around this, but once Evan has been spotted topside, you know that that has to be the call from Georgia to finish off this Elder. It's Unless a it full resets? Fight. That's it has one more work. reset, if it resets one more time, it's going to full regen, there's nothing that anyone can do to stop it. But they have to do something oh, soon. This goes on to two members. That was beautiful coming in from Harai to make sure that Zach cannot get into the fight. And that's what you want to see coming out of North Georgia with the Elder Drake on all these members. They already have the minions topside. They need to just take that last inhibitor if they truly want to make sure that there's no objectives left on the map. No, Baron, no problem. 
says Northern Georgia. They are looking for their last T2 and the last lane of inhibitors left to take on the map. Double supers is their goal, and they look like they can do it, right? They've got so much power. They've got the Galio. They've got all of the CC stacked behind them. All they have to do is finish. All they have to do is execute properly, get this last win, and it will all be worthwhile for them. Currently, though, they're still missing out. They still need a little bit more. They need that one fight, the one last thing to crack open the base. And Columbia College are looking to put a stop to it. You know, they have the vein. They have that little bit of a chance that Evan RL completely pops off, demolishes all three tanks, and they win. But they need him to do that in order to even have a chance. And that's such a demanding thing. I mean, he is a fantastic player. He is so high in the leaderboards. But it's all on him right now as the Maokai comes in. They want to go far. Look how fast Spirit Animal is. He's caught out. Bean wants to bounce him around. Backline Misty Stumpy has so much damage on that AP Aurelia. They already took down Guardian's Angel. They want to turn it back onto Regrets, but he goes, jumps onto quick Julian, crit. bouncing around. This is what you got to be careful. Quick Grit is already gone, and now this is time for Evan RL to help out the team. Pop off Columbia College. They fight back. They get rid of the Guardians. They get rid of the members of North Georgia, but you got to be careful. Regrets. Still wants the fight. Shut oh, down for Misty no. Stumpy. This could be the ace coming in from Columbia. With the death timers this long, they could look for the end, but they want the Baron. The Baron buff is so crucial here. Columbia College, to shove out waves, what they need is they need tankier minions, and they need to be able to deal with the supers. Baron helps them with both of those things, so hopefully this will be the objective that enables them to actually start the comeback into this game. We talked about 35 minutes. It shuts people out, but the base does weird things, and when you dive in, when you leave your backline vulnerable to Mr. Stumpy, He's gonna go in and he's gonna do damage. They have absolutely neglected the health of their Rakan and their Zaya because once you give them an Aurelia, they're gonna take more. That's what's the, the craziest thing is. We've been wanting to see a 5v5 fight this entire game. We're praising how Northern Georgia were somehow coming back into this game. They were dragging it on. They got to the 35 minute mark where they should be on line. But nobody was peeling for Zaya. Nobody was peeling for even regrets. He died, essentially, losing his Guardian's Angel, which is huge for Wukong when he's building full lethality. Yeah, and especially because he's building full lethality, we talked about the Lee Sin starting to fall off. Because the members of Columbia are squishier, it's not as huge of a concern, but the Wukong is still a very squishy man. You know, if he doesn't have that up, right, which he has now sold, he is going to go down very, very quickly. You know, he isn't a tank. He doesn't have those stats. He has one tank item, sure. But one tank item is not nearly enough to stop the onslaught of damage. And at this point, with them knocking at your base as soon as you were at theirs, right? All the inhibitors respond now for Columbia College. You have to be wondering, Northern Georgia, with the engage coming out, where would it start? You know, would it start from the Wukong? Would it be Galio in the middle? Maokai even as another possibility. But the inhibitor is down. The point is moot, and Columbia College are looking for their second inhibitor of the game. With their inhibitors already responding as well, Banner of Command popped onto that cannon minion in mid. It's much easier for them. Baron as well. They take down some parts of the base of Northern Georgia. They're that much closer to winning this game that's been on a knife's edge for the past 10 minutes. Back and forth. You can tell that Columbia, this is where their experience comes in. They had the game all Look at this wave and now they've pushed in these waves beautiful side wave management making sure that they have all these minions in mid waiting for the side lanes mid and bot to start pushing in they might have even caught out spirit animal he took a huge chunk of damage that was righteous glory popped and the interesting thing is because spirit animal was actually always the frontliner they haven't had a way to deal with Mr. Stumpy in the mid lane, right? The API Relia is applying pressure. He's trying to 1v1, and he's tying up at least the Wukong for the most parts of these fights. And if Regrets is there, Regrets is in the mid lane, that's a lot of their combo damage, a lot of their Wombo locked up in a single target duel. Exactly. And there was an attempt at poke. You can tell that Budget Box wants to go into the back lane. He wants to find Evan RL if he can. Take out Fane as quickly as possible. Because once she starts raining down some of the silver bolts, it's going to be very hard for tanks to do too much. Misty Stumpy and Julian in mid-fine budget box. 
We'll get the taunt on a Misty, but it won't be too much more. Trading back and forth. Cyclone connects onto nobody as he has to move back to his fountain. They already lost the top side. There goes the final inhibitor of Northern Georgia. Super minions abound everywhere. They have to make a desperation fight, but it's not onto Julian that you want to go. Redemption is going to heal up only a few people with the Nexus Towers being knocked out. This is where Columbia thrive. They are in the lead. They look for the win. They drag back Spirit Envil. He shredded apart by Vayne. Here comes the top from Fry with the hero's entrance, but it is not enough to stop Vayne. Evan RL oh. is starting to pop off. Double kill. Make that a triple kill. He wants more. He's going to go and get himself a quadra kill. Is it going to be the Penta? They want to find on a quick grit. Guardian's Angel is lost. This could be it. They rooted him up. Penta kill coming in for Evan with game one lockdown by Columbia College in group B. I cannot believe that that went the way it did. Columbia College, Woo! they throw away fight after fight. They get caught. They get focused down. They get picked. They lose objectives. And then they start to turn the game. As soon as I saw that, I was saying, okay, there's no way they can come back. There's no way back into this Evan RL. And then not just Evan RL, right? Their this brilliant macro play, the team macro enabling them to get that chance, to get the chance to come back in, to get the Baron after a fight that they won in their own base after two inhibitors were down, to turn that into two more inhibitors, into three inhibitors, into the instant win of the game. I mean, you know, what can I say? That was a fantastic masterclass in macro for the last five minutes. But this shows you also the level that Columbia College is on. They could literally Absolutely. be at death's door. The game could be over. It could look like Northern Georgia are going to get one of the biggest upsets we've seen in collegiate esports. But Columbia, beautiful coverage. Once they got the 5v5 fight, they knew how to split apart, divide, and conquer Northern Georgia. That one fight literally turned the game back for them, and they pushed and won from there. And, I mean... If you want to talk about just straight winning, that was that was absolutely insane, right? When you when you have so much of a lead, when you have a team comp that plays itself, when you can win the game, all you have to do is not split. All you have to do is not expose your back line. And unfortunately for North Georgia, they made one mistake that cost them Baron, that cost them double inhibitors, that cost them triple inhibitors, that cost them the game. Exactly, but... With that, we're going to let the players and ourselves have a little <laughs> bit of a break because that was some utter madness. What did we end up? That was a 45-minute game 45. where I believe we had almost, what, 80 kills? Something uh, like that? Almost 90 kills. We were three short of 90. Um, see, so that was – that's crazy. We need a break. We need to relax. And <laughs> we need to take a breath. So, guys, stick around. We're going to get ready for game two, Columbia College, Northern Georgia University. We'll see you in just a minute. 